winging smash bang right into them. Boy, what sport? I've heard it all. It was tough on the plane, but Tom says a guy's just got to make a living. Up 7%? Of course it's up 7%. Isn't that good, sir? Is predictability good? Do you feel better because you know the sun is coming up in the morning? Uh, patterns in life have always amazed me, sir. Predictability amazes you? I guess it reassures me more than amazes me. So what amazes me is that everything is so predictable, and I don't find that at all reassuring. Maybe this company should go bankrupt. That would wake up a few people around here, yours truly included. But, but... Oh, of course it would frighten them. That goes without saying, but maybe a little scare is what we need to get the old juices flowing again. <laughs> Isn't there a more prudent way to do that? What does prudence get you? Predictability. Who needs more predictability? Where would we be if George Washington had been prudent? We'd all be bowing and scraping to some silly king. Sam, the problem nowadays is there are no more continents to discover. Isn't that a terrible thing? As I see it, sir, maybe we should be happy we found them all. So ships don't run aground at night. Oh, nonsense. We need undiscovered continents in our lives, and, and shipwrecks, too, for that matter, and I don't have any. I can never follow you when you get philosophical, sir. Of course you can. No, sir, I never know what you're talking about. I'm a practical man. I know that life is short. There's a cheerful thought. Why not life is short and then it's over? That's pretty gall darn predictable. I know full well that life is short. Mine may very well be half over if statistics mean anything. People do live longer these days. You'd make a lousy bartender. You're a great bartender. Well, why am I such a great bartender? Because you make a customer feel welcome and you're beautiful. And you lend an ear when I need one and you're beautiful. And you mix a mean drink. Well, maybe I've mixed you one too many. You can't take a compliment. You can't take no for an answer. I haven't asked a question yet. Yet. Would you go out with me? Take no for an answer. Maybe taking time off with a little woman would help your disposition. Time off with the little woman. A few days away with your better half can change your whole outlook on life. Maybe you're right. I hope so, sir. I'm on the rebound. Did I see you cutting a rug with Charlie Haley's wife the other night in a pathetically obvious attempt to make your fiancé jealous? Former, former fiancé, and I was dancing because I wanted to dance. And maybe I was on the rebound then, but I'm not on the rebound anymore. Answer that, will you? And besides, life is short. Get the telephone. Pro Roadhouse. Miss Owen, please. Just a minute. Uh, it's for you. Sounds like a guy. Sounds like he's on the rebound. I, I only say that in case he asks you out. Very funny. Hello, this is Judy Owen. Sir? Oh. Hello? What is it now, Sam? You forgot to sign this one, sir. Oh, good night, nurse. He hung up. You know, I would never hang up on you, and I'm not on the rebound. And life is short. Then I'll go out with you. You will? You've convinced me you're not on the rebound, that you'd never hang up on me, and life is short. So pick your job off the floor and take a yes for an answer, rookie. To act, send, you wait the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to be affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between to illustrate my last remark. Don't in the way, no way beyond. What do they do just when everything looks so dark? Man, they said you got to accept 
punctuate the positive helium. Money the negative and last on. To the affirmative, don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In Between. Would you like a scotch? What else would I have? You might have a better disposition. I'm sorry. I've been drinking scotch for so long, of course, you take it for granted. Maybe I should try vodka or vermouth or anisette. Maybe you should try pouring it yourself. What day is today? Wednesday, the 23rd. Wednesday. Then it'll be chicken, won't it? With either string beans or Brussels sprouts. Any second now, Gloria will walk in here and say, dinner is ready. And then we'll march in there, and just before we sit down to our Brussels sprouts, Abe will step in and say, if there's nothing else, we'll be going now, our words to that effect. We can adjust the menu to suit your taste. Dinner is ready. I'll leave it warm in the oven. What are we having? Roast chicken. With green beans? Brussels sprouts. Thank you, Gloria. Tell Abe you needn't bother. There's nothing else. We'll be leaving shortly. Thank you, Abe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm not sitting down to dinner with you. You flatter yourself. You can predict everything. Let me tell you what I predict. Indigestion. Let's go out to eat. Let's get out of town. We don't get a move on. You'll be late for choir practice. Choir practice? <laughs> I'm going to the restaurant and see if I can't get some work done. You skip Sunday services, now you skip choir practice. I've never known you to do that. You've never known me to lose my son. Woman, you are so melodramatic. You have not lost your son. Your son is down at Wilberforce, and you should be proud of that fact. I am proud of him. I am not proud of the fact that I can't see him every day. And, and, and sometime soon, my grandchild, all because of the actions of some hateful people whom God clearly does not punish. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Well, I am waiting to see some of the Lord's vengeance. Woman, if you don't change your attitude, the Lord is going to punish us. Oh, good. You're still here. We've decided to take a little trip. You don't mind staying late to help us pack, do you? Don't consider this a punishment. What would you call it if your wife refused to give you a divorce purely out of spite? She may be spiteful. No maybe is and low down and mean. Let's say she's all those things. Let's say she's beneath contempt. But what she is doing is not illegal, so there is nothing you can do about it. What good is there having a lawyer who tells me there's nothing I can do? Lawyers can't change human nature. I'm not asking you to change human nature. I only want you to get me divorced. You can't make your wife divorce you. It says you. Candles, matches, flashlight, robe. Did you bring your bathrobe? Uh, well, if I didn't, it's too late because nothing else will fit in my car. Hot water bottle, lantern. Lantern? In case of an emergency. Do you want me to go get a life raft and a uh, set of Goose liver on the top, baloney on the bottom. Go ahead and make fun, but if we're caught in a storm... Did you bring we'll a doctor's number office. just in case? A copy in my wallet, a copy in your mother's purse, a copy in my uh, the glove compartment of the car. Have a good time. We may do that if we ever get out of here. And thanks for letting us use the cabin, honey. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Heck, you're welcome to it. They wouldn't refund my money, and I don't have a honeymoon to go on anymore anyway. Things don't always work out the, the way, way we, we plan, plan them. them. <laughs> Someday. I'm gonna go. So long, Mrs. K. Thanks for putting me up. Thanks for everything. Bye, Charlie. Come to dinner soon. I will. Where is he going? He's moving back in with Caroline. You're, you're joking. Kidding. Where are you off to? Excuse, please. Chasing someone else's husband? What in the bloody blue blazes are you doing here? I live here. With my loving wife. Cabin number seven, a lucky number. Ruth. Does that car look familiar to you? No. I'm sure it doesn't belong to anyone we know. Oh, my word. What the hell are they doing here? Now, Michael. What the hell are they doing here? Well... Hello? Hello. 
Goodness, hello. Well, for heaven's sake. Isn't this a coincidence? I'll say. <laughs> well, it just goes to show. <laughs> You're not staying here. What the hell you say? I'll call the police. What, to report that your loving husband is home? You're only here to torment me. I'd have good reason to torment you if I were that sort of person, but I'm not. Huh. I'm only here till you divorce me. Very clever, Charlie, but not clever enough by half. There's only one sure way to keep you and my home-wrecking neighbor apart, and that's to stay married to you. Much as the idea turns my stomach. Well, I guess you're stuck with me then. But on the bright side, they say you live much longer if you live with someone that you hate. We could live forever. Don't let it bother you. How can I not let it bother me? We came here to relax, didn't we? But how can we relax with Mr. and Mrs. Fat Cat in the next cabin? I can relax. Well, I can't. Of course you can if you put your mind to it. That's a lot easier said than done. We go on vacation to get away from people like that. What do you want to bet he's figured out a way to have his union pay for that cab? And what do you bet that they find a way to write their vacation off as a business expense? And I have no doubt in my mind that their cabin is fancier than ours. Well, if it's any consolation, you are probably upsetting them as much as he's upsetting you. Good. Oh, now, Michael, you dropped your matches. Oh, look, they're from the roadhouse. The roadhouse. Well, we had that wonderful time last Thanksgiving. You must not have worn those since then. Don't tell me you don't remember. How could I forget? You ready? Two seconds. Long distance, operator. One moment, please. Long distance. Operator, River Run, please. Pearl Roadhouse. What roadhouse? Pearl. Would you spell that? P-U-R-L. I brought you this. I can't remember the last time my man brought me a box of candies. You're trying to soften me up. Well, if that's all it takes, there's a lot more where that came from. Hello? I wondered where you were. Oh, well, very well then. Disconnected. Bye. Abe and Gloria say everything is fine. Good. Isn't it a beautiful night? It's nice here, isn't it? Yes. You comfortable? Yes. You're not too cold. No. Because oh, I have an extra jacket in the back. I'm fine. You like that? Stop asking questions. What's the matter? Nothing except you're asking questions again. But your eyes were open. Oh, report me to the sheriff. Look, I don't know everything there is to know about everything, but I know your eyes shouldn't be open. I'll close them, Slugger. You're on the rebound. You're crazy. Look, I know the signs. You went out with me because you're on the rebound? I haven't had a date in so long, I can't remember when it was. Well, even so, you're on the rebound. Who is it? I'm getting out of the mood. You weren't in the mood to start with. Well, is someone you met in Detroit, someone you met on the train? If this is a sample of your lovemaking, I can understand why your fiancé broke off your engagement. Say, I got no problem in the lovemaking department, and I broke it off, not her, and I'm right about this. Why is it all the women I go out with are always pining for someone else? Caroline Haley was in love with Charlie when we went out. Ginger, for that matter, was on the rebound when we started dating. 
when I think back on how much this car cost. I hate to burst your bubble, but no woman worth her salt ever went out with a man because of the size and shape of his automobile. Well, why do any of you go out with me if you're all in love with somebody else? Because you're sweet. Don't say that. Don't call me sweet. I'm not sweet. Can't get over the price of a can of tomatoes is up to 11 cents a can. It's the last one I'll ever buy. I'll put these groceries up for you, Mother. Now, you go on in and do like we agreed. I didn't agree. Please, Mother. Gloria hasn't gotten over Robert leaving, and, and we all need to help her get through this difficult time. In difficult times, she can call on the Lord. We're moving in that direction, and a compliment from you may turn her right around. A compliment? We've been over this. I'm asking you to pay her a compliment or two. It will cost you a thing, and... It'll be the world to her. Who would have thought I would be doing missionary work with my own daughter-in-law? Charity questions not, mother. Pride goes before a fall, son. Good evening, Gloria. Hello, Mother Davis. Where's Abe? He's putting up my groceries. My, you have made this apartment into such a pleasant home. Well, thank you. It looks cleaner than usual. Are those bills from the restaurant? Yes. It doesn't look as if we'll make this month's rent. Oh, things will turn around as soon as word gets out how delicious your cobblers are. They're almost as good as your sister-in-law. Thank you. And I meant to tell you how good you look in that dress. It hides what you want it to hide. Well? I did my best. Thank you, Mama. I need to use the lobby. Occupied. You've been in there an hour. For better or worse, darling. Go downstairs. See if the Walters will let you use their lobby. Shh. No, I Emma. You must not to keep her out of the bathroom. She'll survive. Please. This is her fault anyway. Please. Calamity. Nobody can take a joke. Sorry, darling. Some things you just can't rush. Oh, don't be crude. What happened to all the pretzels and peanuts? I ate them. I bought them. For better or worse, darling, I was hungry. Maybe if you go down to the Walters, they'll feed you. I will outlast him, love. I'll outlast you both. Isn't it wonderful that Charlie and Caroline have worked things out? Did you read that one out of seven marriages ends in divorce? It's a tragedy and a disgrace. You married a tragic disgrace. Pass me the ketchup. And don't twist my words. You know you were never married in the eyes of the church. Everything seems to work against young couples. You mean like uh, no jobs and no houses available? And it's as if we don't seem to all be pulling together anymore. Well, maybe we should resuscitate Hitler so we all have a common cause again. Don't make fun. People nowadays aren't... No one is kind. And the amount of gossip. Remember what people said about Charlie and Linda? Charlie was living at the house, so people would probably assume... Assumed the worst, as always. And now there's more gossip. I, I shouldn't pay attention to it. But you probably heard it, too. Try me. Jeff was supposedly dancing with Mrs. Haley at the roadhouse the other night and left with her. Well, why do you presume it was just a rumor? Well, you would have told me if it had actually happened. A bartender doesn't do that. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. You are not a bartender. You are the boy's stepfather. He's not a boy. And if I had said one word to you, do you think Jeff would ever trust me again? Well, did you try to stop him? No. No. It's not my job. I'm not talking about your job. I am talking about you as a responsible adult. As a responsible adult? I did pull the plug out of the jukebox to keep them from dancing together, and even that I thought was a little presumptuous, though it did seem prudent at the time. 
And it did seem within my responsibilities as a bartender. Mike, I'm starting to sound like you. You shouldn't have allowed Jack to leave that place with the man. Isn't woman. it romantic? Oh, There's no need to yell. Mm -hmm. You're the one who's yelling. Mm -hmm. I can't talk to you when you're like this. Mm -hmm. Like what? Isn't one romantic? Man, like Listen what? to Mr. and Mrs. Khan argue. <laughs> romantic? Well, it brings back memories. Don't you remember our first married fight? No. You left some things in our hotel room and you blamed it on me. You left things in our hotel room and blamed it on me. You do remember. What was so romantic about it? The way we made up. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Of course, their argument has more substance than ours did. Oh, it does not. Oh, it most certainly does. Her son was socializing with a married woman. Heavens to Betsy. A single man takes a turn around a dance floor with a married woman who's fighting with her husband and you'd think they dropped another A-bomb. He left the roadhouse in her company. Maybe he gave her a ride home. Maybe chivalry isn't entirely dead. Maybe they talked. Maybe the art of conversation survives. It's still a question of propriety, which is something that young people today seem not to have a clue about. Oh, Ruth, where would we be if young people acted like us, for heaven's sakes? They're supposed to be impetuous. They're supposed to laugh at convention when they're young. That's what I admire about youth, their ignorance. How can you admire ignorance in anyone? Not in anyone, in youth. It's ignorance that gives young people faith in their future. Ignorance gives them optimism. And where would we be if young people had no optimism? I've never heard such logic. I think whatever I say tonight, you're going to disagree with. I most certainly will disagree with you if you keep saying things like that. Honestly, since when did we start hallowing youth? My word, what does youth know about life? Not a blessed thing. But you've always given me good advice before. I, I need some now. It has to be dumb luck if any advice I ever gave you or anybody else turned out to be good. Oh, that's not true. Believe me, sister, my advice is not worth the time it takes to listen to. You have tons more experience than I do, and I need to know how to get over breaking up with Jeff short of committing suicide. If you're so upset, why don't you just get back together with him? Because we don't get along. Any other advice? Find a hobby. I'm serious. So am I, kiddo. Besides how to pour a drink and polish glasses, I don't know nothing about nothing. I'm the worst person on earth to ask advice from. I don't trust my judgment. Why should you? You've always been right in the past. Okay, kiddo. If you insist, here's my advice. Don't ever loan money to a stranger, especially if he promises to double it for you. Don't put a drunk at the wheel, and if you do, don't get in the car with him. Don't ever jump into an empty swimming pool. Don't, under any circumstances, ever get involved with a married man. Satisfied? You didn't by any chance break up with somebody recently. Honey, I haven't had anybody to break up with in so long, I can't even remember the procedure. Well, because you sound like somebody that just broke up with somebody. Self. Perhaps I should. Just hours before he was scheduled to be hanged along with ten other Nazi war criminals, Herman Goering was discovered in his cell, dying from potassium What, no cyanide breakfast in bed? At this time, Army I didn't want to wake you, my beloved. The of the then why did you turn this on? I wanted to hear it. Stuffy in here. Then perhaps you'd be more comfortable living elsewhere. No, I like it here, sweetie pie. Darling, would you be an angel and run down to the pharmacy for more film for my camera? I want to be sure I don't run out. And I'll be taking your photo whenever you and Gina walk the baby, whenever you help Gina in with the wash, whenever you set foot in her flat, even if it's only to say good morning. My attorney has advised me to record your indiscretions for evidence in case you and I, God forbid, ever end up in divorce court. Camera's a small investment given the potential return. Honey, but you even aim that thing at me and I'll smash that camera to bits. My attorney said to call him the moment you do anything like that, darling. Now, smile.
Mr. Abercrombie, I presume. Good morning, Mr. Khan. Are they biting? The manager says they are. What are you using? I got this from the manager. No, I mean, what bait are you using? Oh, uh, uh, some leftover bread. Squeezed a wad onto the hook. Ah. Fishing doesn't hold your attention? Well, not a great deal happens. Well, I think that's the point of it. You're forced to engage your mind. You fish long enough, you become a poet. Maybe Dr. Spock is an appropriate fishing companion. De gustibus, Mr. Khan, non disputandum est. How very tolerant of you. Fishing engenders tolerance. I knew a fellow once, told his wife he was going fishing every time he went to see his mistress. Is that so? He'd stop at the fish market on the way home, buy fresh fish. He'd go so far as to rub the fish on his pants and shirt. He'd even bring home half-empty containers of bait. Is that so? Yes, ma'am. But not more than a pound. <laughs> no, ma'am. And don't forget to pick up my gray suit at the cleaners. I'll be sure and do that. You have a good time and don't worry about a thing. It's too lovely here to worry. Thank you, Abe. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye ma'am. That was... That was Ruth Sloan checking up on us to make sure we showed up for work, even though there is nothing to do. And they took the day off. I, uh... I meant to show you this earlier. Tell me it is something that'll bring in this month's rent on Rupert so we can keep it open. We will make the rent. Will you have a little faith? This here, see this? He's a Wilberforce graduate. Good for him. <sighs> Dr. Bruce Green, who graduated in 1941, is one of a number of Wilberforce University graduates who went on to become doctors and dentists. That's where your son is going to college. You talk about the Lord answering prayers in ways you never know. <laughs> what else does it say about him? That's all, woman. Isn't that enough? He is probably light enough to pass. It's a terrible thing to say. You don't even know the man. Light enough to pass? And his parents are probably rich. Charlie's not here. I know. I have proposition for you. Let me guess. You want me to divorce him so you can marry him. Caroline, it is not good what has happened. You're quite the diplomat. But it's not my fault, and it's not the fault of Charlie. Then I suppose it's my fault. No, what I'm meaning to say is that Charlie decided to divorce before... He, bef before you batted your big brown eyes at him. Well, why wouldn't you say that? I am sorry you do not believe me. Still, I have proposition for you. I'm all ears. I give you money and you give Charlie divorce. <laughs> what money do you have? I have the money the Sloans give me to send me back to Italy. And I have Michael's death benefits. You've always said that was Emma's money. It's for making Emma happy. Eventually, this will make Emma happy. couldn't take that money. Take it. Tell Jeff to be sure to pack his slippers and to take a bottle of castor oil. Yes. Goodbye. Uh, Jeff joined a team that's playing exhibition games in the off-season. He's leaving tonight. Ah. Where's Mr. Sloan? He's fishing. Ah, oh, so's Al. <laughs> I told him to leave anything he catches outside the cabin. Well, the manager said he'd be glad to. <gasps> oh, oh, sit down. Oh, sit down. I'll phone a doctor. No, no, no need. Heavens, I'm not due for another two months. We'll pass. Two months? You must be having twins. The doctor doesn't think so. Oh, there. It's gone. Oh. Well, you Catholics certainly are a brave lot. 
I mean, having a baby at your age. Every child is a gift from God. And one hopes that in his infinite wisdom, he gives us those gifts while we're still able to carry them around. <laughs> he never gives us a burden greater. <gasps> ah! Oh, goodness. Oh, it's nothing. I'll pass. It's nothing. It's nothing. Did you hear that? What? I thought I heard somebody yelling. This gentleman went so far as to cut his finger once so he could prove to his wife he really was fishing. He said he cut it on a rusty hook, got extra sympathy. Another time, on the way home, he jumped into a pond near his house so he could tell his wife he fell in the water. Such elaborate deception must certainly take the spontaneity out of an affair. Well, I guess he thought it was worth it if he kept it up. I heard it that time. Sounds like somebody injured. Ah, Mr. Khan! Mr. Khan! Mr. Khan, your wife's having a baby! Today. Well, Ruth is a trustee at Memorial Hospital. This is having no effect at all. Mm -hmm. That happens sometimes. And she is a woman. And she has had a baby, and that gives her a leg up on you and me. But she's never actually delivered someone else's baby? Ruth is a trooper in a pinch. Try to take your mind off it. Tell me about that Dr. Spock you've been reading. Is he as radical as everyone says he is? Nobody I know says he's radical. People say he makes a lot of sense. Does he? Then what do I know? Some things remain true forever. Spare the rod, spoil the child. You spanked your son? Oh. With Michael, that sort of punishment was counterproductive. But you can't compare my son to the run of the mill. Oh, I'm sure. No, he had his mother's stubbornness. The one time I spanked him, I saw a look of stubbornness on his face, the like of which I've never seen before or since, except in Ruth. And I knew any more a punishment of that sort would be counterproductive. When the hell is that doctor going to get here? You'll soon be a father, and you'll forget all you've been through today. I think congratulations are a bit premature. But if you've already made your decision, why can't I congratulate you? Because this bloody state of Ohio won't make the divorce final for another six months. So get me another drink while we're waiting. Are you sure? Sure as I've ever been. Why don't you let me call you a cab? <laughs> you can call me what you want, but get me another drink. Too bad you're not in Reno. You'd only have to wait six weeks. Where is Reno? In Nevada. Where's Nevada? Out west. Where the cowboys are. Honey, in my experience, there are cowboys everywhere. Maybe he'll change his mind and give us an extension on the rent. Maybe we'll witness the second coming. We only need $58. May as well be a million. Well, when you get like this... Good evening. Just coffee. Thank you. You come back. Would you like some fresh apple cobbler with your coffee? No, thanks. Thank you. You come back. Mom says don't forget your slippers. Got it. Will you drop me to the station? You actually trust your sister at the wheel of your sacred car? It's an emergency, and if you wreck it, I'll never speak to you again. Hello? Linda, can I borrow your overnight case? Sure. Oh, thanks a million. Why? Because I'm going on tour. What tour? Mr. Lummel wants to open new markets west of the Mississippi, and the circus he was going to sponsor, the elephants died. So he wants me to do radio broadcasts instead. I guess it's kind of like the Lummel tomato juice girl goes west. Well, that sounds <laughs> exciting. I'll say. I can't wait to get away from River Run. Thank you. Come again. Thank you. Forty-nine dollars shy. Well, we tried. We can be proud of that. 
There's a lot going to waste. We can maybe take some down to the church. Maybe you can. Oh, for heaven's sakes, woman, it's for the poor. Maybe it's a good thing Robert's not Don't here. Don't you say that. I'll say what I please. You've been saying what you please for some time here lately. We're just uh, closing up. Pay telephone is all I need. It's over there. Thank you. I, I, I would hate to have Robert here. How have you been talking here lately? With no, no hope, no, no optimism at all, and no respect for other people's faith. Well, you give me a reason to have hope. You find your own reason. You're the one who's always telling your son to believe that things will get better. You're the one who's always telling your son. Excuse me. Thank you. You're welcome. Who's forever telling your son to have faith, our prayers are answered, even if answered in a mysterious way. I try, Abe. I do try. But God should not let those people drive our son away. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's for the best. We, we never know. I can't bring myself to say that anymore. Excuse me. I got a mechanical problem. The company tow truck won't be here for another hour. And I'm already behind schedule. And I got 43 tired and hungry passengers. So, if you could stay open for another hour or so, for us, uh, I'm sure it'd be worth your while. Well, we would be happy to. Not nothing. I know you. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> then why do you ask? Huh? Oh, well, I know you are thinking that I should believe that that is some kind of miracle that God wanted that bus to break down, that the Lord works in mysterious ways. That's what you are thinking. Well, what if I don't consider it a miracle? What if I just consider it coincidence? What's the difference? Better warm up that cobbler. Put these the rest of the team's bags, would you please? Thank you. What is she doing here? Uh, would you please tell that fellow that I don't see it's any of his business? Young man. But that if he must know, would you tell that so-called all-star that uh, Limo Tomato Juice is sponsoring his barnstorming tour? Limo Tomato And I am the official representative of Limo Tomato Juice. Miss Zebo is the official... Gentlemen. Gentlemen! Gentlemen, please try and remember that you are gentlemen. What are you doing here? I, I mean to say, uh, good evening, Mrs. Haley. I am honored. I'm going to Reno in Nevada to get a divorce of the, so what you Americans call a quickie, so it won't be Mrs. Haley for long. I wonder if we're on the same train. Uh, 915 Chicago? What a coincidence. May I help you to your seat? How very sweet of you. The new methods are much better than they used to be. Any obstetrician worth his salt simply knocks the expectant mother unconscious with one of the new drugs and drags that child out. When mama wakes up, she doesn't remember a thing. Well, anything's got to be better than this. Mr. Khan, you have a son. Oh, my. Puzzle top. What? Muzzle top! Michael, let him go. How's Anne? She's worn out. She'd like to see you. Go see for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you are the most remarkable woman I have ever met. <laughs> How much have you had to drink? I am drunk at the sight of you, my beloved. Well, not too drunk to make me some hot tea, I hope. Coming right up. <laughs> You delivered a baby all by yourself. Mrs. Khan delivered the baby. 
what I did was no more than anyone would do under the circumstances. Nonsense. You are a bona fide hero. Don't you try to deny it. You know what it reminded me of? When Michael was born. And I had the oddest sensation. Now, don't laugh that God was making it up to me a little for having taken Michael away. You know what I'd like to do? Your wish is my command. It's been almost a year since you took me dancing. When we get back, let's make a point of going to the roadhouse. Let's dance right here. Oh, mazel tov to us both. What? Nice work, Mother. Thanks, Dad. I'm sorry I have to breastfeed. I didn't bring any formula. Dr. Sparks says breastfeeding is better than bottle feeding anyway. You shouldn't listen to every radical theory that comes along. Dr. Spock isn't a radical. He just says nature is better. I'm not going to debate you. But I would think you, of all people, would want to depend on modern science. Well, I would think that you, of all people, would think that saying formula is better than what nature has to provide in this instance would be an insult to God. You can't argue that way. You don't believe in God. But you do, and I'm just trying to keep you consistent. I have bottle-fed my other three children, and they turned out fine. I didn't say they didn't turn out fine. All I said was Dr. Spock says breastfeeding is better. This is my fourth baby, and it's your first. Which is why... Which is why I got off to the wrong foot in this conversation. Let me start again. Great work, Mother. Thanks, Dad. reservation and now the moral of the story here's what happens when baby beauty contest winners grow up